Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Chris, this is my shop partner Oots, and this is my buddy Grant Oliver up from Charlevoix, Michigan. He's coming down here to help me start a project I've been looking forward to for a long time. I'm gonna start working on my dream wooden drift boat, fly fishing boat. It's actually gonna have a motor on it, so it's gonna be a power drifter. So today we're gonna start building the strong back, and this video series is gonna follow the whole entire boat building process. I don't know how many videos it's gonna end up being, but it's gonna be a lot of fun. So make sure you're subscribed and follow along this process. It's gonna be awesome. Let's get started. Before we get into the build, I wanted to sit down with you real quick and explain exactly what I'm gonna be doing, the decisions I made, and the type of boat that I'm gonna be building. So first of all, I wanna explain there's a couple types of fly fishing boats that this is gonna be modeled around. First, you have your traditional drift boat, Drift boat has a really, really steep rocker. It barely has a transom, if anything at all. The transom is the back of the boat where you would mount a motor. On a traditional drift boat, the idea is that you launch upriver and float downriver and fish, and then your vehicle either gets transported for you or you transport it with a, with a buddy, and then you pick it up downriver. So your float might be however many hours, and you don't go back up river. Now you can put a motor on a drift boat, but they typically can't go very fast. It's just the way the design of the drift boat is. It does a really, really good job of staying super high in the water. You can go through super skinny water, but because of its design and it doesn't really have much of a transom, you can't go back up river very fast, like maybe five miles an hour max. Now here in Michigan, I do a lot of fishing on big wider rivers like the Grand River, the Muskegon, the Manistee, where it's really nice to have a motor to be able to move from spot to spot. Or if you're by yourself, you can launch at one area, fish downstream, and then motor back up to your boat at the end of the day, or motor back up to your trailer at the end of the day, or go up river and then float back down to your trailer. I also have really, really amazing smaller blue ribbon trout streams here in Michigan, like the Pier Marquette, the Osabo. There's many, many beautiful smaller rivers that you don't really need or want a motor or can even have a motor on it. So I want the ability to be able to take the motor off and fish those like a traditional drift boat. So I'm building this hybrid type of boat that is going to have a a lot of features like a drift boat and a lot of features like what's called a power drifter where it's essentially a drift boat with a real wide transom but most power drifters they don't they're not designed to take the motor back off so mine's going to have a narrower transom going to kind of try to meet in the middle and hopefully if i execute this right it'll motor about up to 20 miles an hour so i can zoom around on those bigger rivers and i can take that motor off and roll it really well just like a drift boat so I bought a couple sets of plans that I'm gonna be modifying to do this. I bought a set of plans from Spira International for a power drifter. Going through those plans, there is a lot that is not really included in there. There's a lot of stuff that I'm gonna to have to figure out on my own. And so I've taken those and I've changed the design. I'm changing the transom, bringing that in much narrower. I'm adding a, a lot more flair to the boat. This has a pretty pretty straight up and down size. I'm gonna be adding a lot of flair, which makes the boat a little more stable. I'm gonna be narrowing the base, doing all sorts of different things. And then I also bought a set of plans from Jason Cajun, who has Cajun Boat Works out of Montana, where he basically just builds traditional drift boats. And they're some of the most beautiful boats I've ever seen. They're gorgeous. And so I'm looking at a lot of his plans and kind of styling some design features for this boat. Um, I'm not following either of these plans really at all. I'm just kind of using those for information on basically how to build a boat properly because I've never done it before <laughs> and uh, some design features and things like that. So I'm really excited about this process. There's going to be a bunch of different videos that follow along and at the end of this project we'll have a really beautiful kind of hero video where it goes through the whole process from start to finish and should be a lot of fun, so make sure you're subscribed to follow along, and let's get started building this thing.
All right, first I'm gonna cut up some two by sixes to make this strong back. I'm gonna use the strong back style that's recommended in the Spirit International plans, but I'm gonna go back later on and reinforce them some because this method of screwing one board into the side of the other board on its long edge is just not strong enough for me. Next, we're gonna set an angle gauge to mark and cut the angles on the front and back of the main strong back beam. These will hold the stem, which is the board that creates the front edge of the boat, and the transom at their proper angles. All right, so we have our strong back built and it is nice and level, which is gonna be important for our next step, which is laying out all these bracings that we'll mount the frame to. Little trick we're gonna do, all of our measurements are going off of this long edge of this strong back and since it's underneath, it's harder to measure from. So we're gonna clamp a framing square nice and flush with that long edge, hook a tape measure to the top of that and then we can lay out our measurements all on the top and start screwing this bracing in for our frame. Oh, and I think I forgot to mention, but Grant is a full-time boat builder and he has an awesome Instagram channel. So make sure you go over and follow him on Instagram. His name is Oliver Woodcraft. I'll put a link to his Instagram page down in the description. All right, everybody, thanks so much for watching. That's it for this part one intro video. On our next video, we're gonna head over to my local hardwood dealer and pick up some of this really nice Moranti to build the bottom of the boat out of. We're also gonna be working on the transom, so make sure you don't miss it and tune into that video. We'll see you next time. Thanks.